I came to Hollywood in uh, early 52, uh, sometime 52. And, and Climax had already been on the air and remained uh, on the air. I, I uh, took over from the very hot producer they had, uh, uh, Bertain Windus, who had been a Broadway producer and director, directed Life with Father. He was now the producer of Climax. Anyway, the network felt that they needed to have a change because they were, had been a little un, uh, quite a bit unhappy for some time, but now the last straw on last week's show, the man who was shot in the first scene in the murder, he was shot dead on the floor. He was just an extra. I mean, his character had nothing to do with it. The leads were playing detectives and things. The guy didn't know anything about television, even extra, he was getting you know, $40 a day, and uh, one day. And he didn't know that you had to look at the light on the camera to know that the camera was off, the light was off, and the camera was no longer on you. He, at one point, heard these guys talking over him, these two so-called detectives, and they were just talking, and it went on, the scene went on, the scene went on, and he thought, oh, it must be safe for me now. He got up, dusted himself off in full view of the audience, and walked off the set as if, as if he knew what he was doing. I mean, just think, well, in the early, early days of television, that could have been a big joke, you see, and that everybody would make something of it. But now, when you've got a new hour show and everything's riding on it, and CBS and Jarvis, and Television City was not being used much, and this was the, uh, almost the reason for having it was to it's bring out- a very out, prestige show. Uh, yes, so because the, an hour was the biggest thing you, you had in those days. They immediately fired all the leading people. I mean, they, not actors, because it was a, an anthology, but uh, the director, the, uh, the producer, the story editor, who had nothing to do, he didn't even know what happened. He wasn't there, he wasn't. I mean, they, fi they fired the two story editors. They just got mad, and I was the one to come out and make everything wonderful. So I said, you know, this can happen to anybody. So I understand that uh, Sidney Lumet was the uh, first choice for uh uh, being the director of Climax? Yes, uh, as far as I know, the first choice when the show was to change hands. Um, yes, I think so. And I was told that uh, um, that he really did not want to come to California. He was happy in New York. And uh, I felt really uh, quite pleased about it. I've always been a fan of his, and deservedly so. He's a wonderful director and was showing signs of it then. But uh, I didn't feel that the two, two times out that we had, uh, Oh, together, w w the work was especially the best for both of us, for either of us. And uh, uh, a part of it was my fault in, in miscasting. I had him do the Philadelphia story, which was not really his material. He could do it, but it was not really what he should be doing or wanted to do. And uh, it also made it possible for Frankenheimer, who was, I think, the next choice of the network, and certainly mine, to come... Uh, Yes, yeah, so it was uh, a, a very happy uh, happening in any case. Was the climax generally perceived as a success? Did you evaluate it as a success? Oh, yes, I think so. Yes, I think so. I think the very things that made the network change, it really had not affected the audience particularly. Uh, maybe if it had gone on that way, uh, CBS felt that it was beginning to slump, and maybe if it had in, in work, uh, it would have affected it adversely. But uh, I don't. I don't think so. We were handed, I must say, a couple of root scripts by the current occupants, and uh, it, it was well. Of, 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 I just said I wouldn't do it, and Frankenheimer said the same thing, and more and loudly, more loudly than I. But they forced him to do it because he was the junior member, and he had to do. Uh, finally, had to do the next show. I just took two weeks out and said I will prepare couple of scripts. Maybe I can mend something that's started here, but I, I just have to do that. I can't. There's no point in both of us going on to do the next show, which I, which Frank and I says still is the worst show he ever did and all the ones he did. And I can't remember what it was. You can't remember the title. Was something you, like South of the Border. Or, do you um, think Climax was a necessary and important evolutionary step towards uh, Playhouse 90? Oh, I think so, because 
Uh, part of the fact of the location of it in California was very important because they wanted to continue that so-called heritage. Then also, uh, coming from here, a show like Climax had the success. I mean, it was a, it was successful three times a month and once, uh, and once there was a same sponsor, but but a uh, review review, review type show. Uh, but also, um, the. Uh, the fact that they wanted, uh, CBS wanted to go on now and show off a bit more and really have something uh, really special on a weekly basis, which is what Playhouse 90 became. And so, uh, and there was never any question that it would be done here. There was never any mention that it should be done in New York or anything like that. It was quite the opposite. So I think that, that uh, it did have, Climax had a key role where CBS said, all right, when we have that success, uh, on the West Coast, so a single one-hour show continuing. Uh, what about, uh, where do we go? And I'm told, we were told various things. I sometimes am credited with it, but I, I did not say, let's do this show. It do was Playhouse 90. Playhouse 90. I was very glad when they asked me to do it, but I thought it was always Frank Stanton, Dr. Frank Stanton, uh, or Mr. Paley, he himself. Uh, now, it could have been uh, them. I understood that... Uh, at a meeting where Stanton and was, I don't know whether Paley was there, that uh, Stanton broached the thing, so let's, we must do something very different, very special, uh, that can be extraordinary, and what about c considering a 90-minute adventure of some sort? Apparently, I don't know whether he went farther than that, or, 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 or even saying a 90-minute anthology, which he probably did, and uh, it was picked up very fast by Hello Robinson, who was then head of programming. And uh, from our point of view of working on it, Hubble was the, the key man because he was the one I dealt with always. But it was a show that was watched by all, and uh, uh, Mr. Paley was very aware of everything that went on with it. He was, I don't mean the small day-to-day -day things, but he knew about every show and all that. He, he cared.